how much do you know about climate change? You know everything we do affects the world around us? I never used to think about this stuff, but now I'm more aware of my actions so I can help the environment. And I learned this in my environmental science class. I learned that this class was growing tilapia fish out of the greenhouses. They planted strawberries, peppermints, and two types of lettuce, and spinach in a tray with porous stones, and water, because porous stones are cleaner and maybe unwanted chemicals in the soil. There's also a fish tank attached to the plant tray that allows the fish and the plants to benefit from each other. The fish waste that is used to fertilize fruits and vegetables, which are aiming to use for our school lunches. This system helps the environment because no pesticides and herbicides are being used that would pollute the environment. It's so exciting thinking of all the different ways to be conscious of the environment and all of the little things that I can do to make a difference. My interest in all that begins on Earth Day when I just happen to stumble upon our school's greenhouse. What is this? What is this? Are you here to help? Help? Help what? What are you doing? This is our hydroponic system. There's tilapia fish in this tank with good bacteria. This whole system is a cycle. The fish waste, which carries ammonia that can be very harmful, is broken down by oxygen and bacteria in the water. This process is called nitrification. The waste is changed into nitrates, which are less toxic to both fish and the plants. The water and nitrates is cycled into the plant tray and is used to fertilize the plant. What is that? This gadget over here tells us how much conductivity is going here and the temperature. What is conductivity? Conductivity is the amount of bacteria or minerals or dirt that's inside of this tank. So what is pH? pH is the level of protons, it's the measurement. So if we have too many protons, they're considered acidic, and if they're less protons, it's considered a base. So we need our fish to be swimming in six to eight pH levels, so they're good, but we don't want our pH too low as well. So this helps us measure it and tell us that our water is satisfactory to the fish. The specific temperature range for tilapia fish is 78 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit and it can reach up to 100 degrees. And this measures our pH, how much, and this our temperature. Oh cool. Hey, what are you doing with those rocks? They're not just rocks. They're called lecastones. They're porous rocks. Do you know what that means? We all have pores. Exactly. The small pores help us hold in the water. And it's also very important not to touch these stones. The oil from our skin can contaminate the water. So why did you pick hydroponics instead of traditional farming? Oh, I'm so very glad you asked. There are many reasons why hydroponics is a beneficial farming system. You see, traditional farming uses pesticides, which we know can be very harmful to humans and animals. My friend Colette over here will explain. Right. Hello. Hello, Colette. So, um, with factory farming and traditional farming, compared to hydroponics, um, factory farming is a lot more harmful for the environment and for animals and for like us also, because um, factory farms have runoff which means that um, the pesticides and uh, the manure that's used to fertilize the land gets into the water and soil and it pollutes it. And um, the factory farms also emit a lot of harmful gases such as methane and hydrogen sulfide. And that can also really contribute to global warming, which is a really bad thing. They invited me to learn more about climate change in their presentations that they were doing later that day. While I was in the classroom, I learned so many interesting things about the environment. I learned how it's important for the pH levels and conductivities are for keeping the fish alive. 
The fish are very sensitive to the amount of ions that are in the water, so it's important to keep a certain level in the order for the fish to survive. I also learned that organic food must be packaged and shipped separately than non-organic food. They do this to be sure that pesticides and other chemicals do not rub off and contaminate organic produce. They also inform me that family farmers are generally run with an understanding of the need for soil balance. Crops are rotated and the waste of the animals are used to fertilize the land. So farmers take from the land, but they replenish what they have taken, whereas factory farmers do not. Wow, hearing all this stuff really changed the way I thought about climate change. And it made me wonder how it affected the students doing the project. I'm a lot more aware of the effects that we have in the environment. I learned by participating in this project that everything that I do counts. That by making small changes into my life and recycling or not polluting, I can help everything around me. I learned that organic food tastes better, is healthier for you, and has a better effect on the environment. I think this will make a difference in our school community. We still run the hydroponic system and teaching children about growing foods organically, which can impact the climate change and environment. To learn more about climate change, you can Google it, ask a teacher, maybe even a friend, start up a conversation because it's affecting our lives every day.